has that sound, yeah, yeah. Take these walls and rip them, rip them down. Take my, and slip them, slip them. All right, welcome to part two. I, uh, where we left off, we had just gone over some of the documents uh, regarding my refusal uh, for entry to uh, her, her Majesty's homeland. Um, so, where did that leave us? Right. Okay. So, refusal for entry based on the money. They wouldn't. They they, they didn't. They didn't accept any proof. I wanted to also iterate the fact that my sponsor did not get an interview. They asked her like three questions and that was it. They didn't interview her. There's no way to vet any of the other information that I that I supply to them. They disallowed me access to any records such as like uh, stuff that I had in my computers. Uh, my phone was utterly useless there because A, no wireless. B, I'm not set up for roaming in the UK. Besides, I hadn't had a chance to even buy a SIM card yet because I didn't even get to do anything since I got off the plane. So I was pretty much screwed. I had made printouts. I made printouts that showed the PayPal money transfer had been initiated uh, to be put into my account. I had that printed out and I showed them. How were they able to know my uh, bank records for September? I printed those out. So I carried them with me in case something like this happened. I wanted to show them I wanted to show them that I had every intention of having a holiday and yes I had a return ticket already bought and paid for and scheduled for November 30th okay I had that itinerary printed out they're known as e-tickets you can use them as your as your ticket to receive your boarding pass this is what I handed to them and yet they still thought I was not a genuine uh, genuine visitor moving forward I was going to talk to you about how immigration services isn't run by the government per se well there is these guys here home office terminal 2 they oversee everything sure home office does have a dot gov website and everything else however they're not the ones that were handling me no no they weren't the ones that are hand handling me were basically outsourced companies, primarily Tascor. Uh, they're the ones that were handling that specific uh, um, airport facility in Heathrow. I'm not sure about the other ones. I've only been detained in one so far, so um, better luck next time. Uh, but we're talking companies like Serco, G4S, MIDI, Geo Group. Um, I also believe Reliance is also in there. They used to be in there anyway. I think they had some issues uh, regarding uh, some hurt detainees. Anyway, I think G4S and Reliance uh, were in a bidding war, and I don't think Reliance won. But that's not even the scope of this video, so I'm not even going to get into all of that today. Um, but it's food for thought. <clears throat> anyway, uh, in this picture here, that is exactly the facility that I was put into. It looks all nice in the daytime, but they brought me in there 11 o'clock at night, ushered me past, uh, like I didn't see a single person other than the, uh, the caretaking staff, uh, the guards. Well, there's just pretty much two guards. There's, there's one on the floor, one on uh, the main ground, and... Uh, it wasn't until then, by the way, that they actually let me even have a cigarette. So you can just imagine, I was just, oh, I was, I was pretty tense. Um, which we can go back. We'll we'll look at the medical document in a little while. So so the Colnebrook Immigration Center uh, is, I believe, that's run uh, by one of these companies. I believe it's Tascor. It could be any one of these companies now because when they hand you off, I know the people that were at the airport, they had the task score badges on. So that they were definitely task score. The people moving me in the vehicles, in the armored vehicles, those were task score. When they dropped me off here, these caretakers were just custodians, basically. Um, the nurses were just nurses. Uh, it was... 
it was actually probably much more relaxing being around them because they were baffled by how I was treated. They didn't know what was going on. Like, why? They said they never get someone for just six hours. Yeah, right? Anyway, so apparently uh, there's been a lot of asylum seekers, by the way. <laughs> I, I mentioned it in the last video. Maybe I should have just saw it after asylum. Uh, that probably wouldn't have been a very good idea because... Uh, this story that this is a, this is about is about a guy Abdal Al Bashir Al Bashir arrived at London's Heathrow Airport in 1998 after fleeing what he says was persecution by Sudan's government. He applied for so asylum and then spent much much of the next decade in Britain's immigration detention centers. So, wow, that would be a hell of a story now, wouldn't it? But like I was saying also in the other video, I don't want this to be about me. This is about how immigration is handled. And if somebody like me, who is effectively harmless, bit of a journalist, yeah, maybe I poke my nose around in, in, in some shit here and there, but, you know, I'm, I'm harmless. And they're not going to let me. And I'm also from a Commonwealth country. My grandfather was born there. My father was born there. I have family there. You know, and and yet, you know, you got you know uh, you got Syrian refugees. Uh, like some of them are very questionable uh, in appearance, and there seems to be they're they're selling that there's a lot of kids, but really like 13 percent of them or something are kids, according to this this article. I mean, I haven't vetted the the, the source yet, the right scoop. I don't know. I haven't vetted it, but I mean, even if these are conservative figures, whether it's 20, but 30 what what's what you know what I mean like uh, how are they allowing people that shouldn't be there who really shouldn't be there to be there and yet little old harmless me is getting you know detained and released and I mean we already know that uh, from many videos ago and other researchers have covered this how Homeland Security constantly does this to to activists and journalists. They they detain them and then release them, usually with no charges. And that's very very common. And here we go. It's happened all all, all over again. This time to me. Um, but yeah, uh, these companies. Okay, we'll look at Task Score for one. Uh, they have, you know, they 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 got that whole para police kind of look to them. Um, very very pseudo military um al almost 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 fascist but i mean of course all, all the different races and creeds and religions are, are are covered so obviously anybody can be a fascist nowadays i guess but uh that's one of the companies also g4s one of the probably one of the biggest security companies I've ever heard of. Uh, we have G4S right here. They're the rent -a cops that are all over the place. You know, at banks and uh, you know other uh, other places that require guarding, whether they're parking lots, dealerships, whatever. I mean, but they're huge. I had no idea that they even ran immigration in other countries and had and and had para police uh, involvement in what one, two, three, four, five, six, six continental areas, <laughs> right? And then you got Serco, and I started reading their page and immediately just lost my shit because uh, how do, they they look very very service oriented. They don't look like Nazi, but look at this. How does being a military reservist enable Serco employees to enhance their skills and make more of a positive contribution at work? What the f is that? Being a military reservist. That enables Circo employees to enhance their skills. Enhance them how? It's called paramilitary, guys. It's time that people woke up. Here's a home office. Here's how they represent themselves. All very above board, very busy, very officious. They're, they're helping the Syrian refugees. In this picture, they're, they're all kids. Um, you can... Uh, I'm going to look into a UK visa because next time I do go there, I'm going to make sure that I have all of my ducks in a row. Oh, you you could you can bet, and I'm going to wear a T-shirt that says "Suck my deek." Uh, I'm I apologize. I'm just angry, 
Um, let's see here. We got Home Office sends for the support for Mediterranean Mission. Oh, look at this. A comprehensive strategy to defeat extremism. Oh, wow. Building a stronger Britain together. Syria refugees, UK government response. Ah, uh, guys, I don't know if you buy all this bullshit, but this is happening, guys. This is happening everywhere. This isn't just in the UK. This is happening everywhere. I wish I could remember, you know, I was, when I got off the plane in Calgary, I had spent, by this point in time, I probably spent about 26 or 28 hours in the air, about 26, 28 hours locked up in total and I just wanted to get I did not want to be in, con in a confined space whether it's an airplane a room cab nothing I just I just went out for a walk and then I jumped in a cab and went to a motel and stayed there and I didn't even make my connector flights you know like screw that but anyway um, people <sighs> Not everybody thinks about this because they're not worried about this when they get home from work. They're not worried what what's going on in, in you know in that purgatorial state where when you get off of a plane, you're in their custody. You can't go back on the plane. Oh, I changed my mind. Now you are going through their turnstile system, and that's exactly what it is and you're in their custody. In those documents, it said I was not granted leave. Why? Because I'm in their custody. They have to grant me leave of custody in order to grant me entry into the country. So you are indefinitely in a purgatorial state. Then you got these goddamn companies operating with impunity, protected by the corporate laws that have been legislated over the last 10 years basically allow these guys to do whatever the hell they want not to mention I'm in their custody already and I'm not entering I wasn't entered into the country so under the custody of these companies my standard human rights don't even apply I had no right of appeal they didn't want to vet the information I gave them they had made their mind up and they wanted to make an example Well, yeah, guys, I wanted to also cover one other little thing here uh, before I forgot about it. Um, my uh, instructions to the flight staff is an interesting document. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Here we go. Here's the removal directions. Okay. So they keep on quoting this Immigration Act 1971. I have to actually sit down and read some of this because, like, I wonder like to see what differences from the previous act were, were there so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on that but um, okay so to the owners agents of Air Canada leave to enter the United Kingdom has been re either been refused or cancelled in respect of Robert John Morris 28 1974 nationality blah 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 um, removal directions I hereby direct you to remove make arrangements for the removal of the person named above from the United Kingdom to Canada by flight and that was yeah the one flight got cancelled so they updated it they made a new sheet and printed that out as well but um, if you see here it's got these little footnotes one and two what do those footnotes mean mm. Schedule 2 of the Act, Paragraph 2. I'm going to have to look all these up. But this is interesting. In accordance with Paragraph 8.1b of Schedule 2 to the Act, as modified by the Channel Tunnel International Arrangements Order 1993, I have directed that the persons named above be placed aboard your ship, aircraft, train, and I require you to prevent the person named above from disembarking in the United Kingdom or before the directions for his removal have been fulfilled. For this purpose, you may detain the person above in custody on board. And there's my immigration officer, Gabriel Clark. Hmm. Yeah. 
just wanted to say your name again. Anyway, uh, if a decision is taken to cancel these directions, this notice of intention to remove would be notified immediately if no direction has been... Oh, if a decision is taken to cancel these directions, this notice of intention to remove, you will be notified immediately. Wait a minute. I thought your minds were made up. Thought you can't go back on your on your decision, huh? That's what, that's what Gabriel told me. No. But if a decision is taken, oh, I'm telling you, man, somebody there just isn't doing their job or is, it, is doing it too well. Pricks. I will be notifying these offices once I uh, get over my initial initial anger here. But anyway, just thought I'd uh, point that out. Uh, the other... The other bit to uh, to mention here is uh, in my medical papers, just so uh, you guys can see, this is the kind of stuff that scares the shit out of me and should scare the shit out of anyone. Here it is. After doing all their screening and everything, here's a part. Hepatitis B vaccine offered and accepted. I never got offered nor did I accept it and I didn't receive any shots. I did not receive any shots. However, if they had kept me any longer, would I have? Would there have been any way for me to avoid it or to be or to get out of it? Because I tell you, that's when the fisticuffs would become flying out. That's when they'd be uh, taking me down as a combatant because you're not sticking me with nothing. Not without a fight anyway. But yeah, no, they were very thorough. And anyway, just wanted to uh, show that because apparently they gave themselves the right to stick me with the needle. And I'm just happy I dodged a bullet on that note. But now, with what we do in this in this movement trying to expose you know different aspects and everybody has their niche um who's to say that they didn't do some research who's to say that they just didn't you know all they had to do was a google search i probably would have popped up in several places the people that i know probably popped up in several places they 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 took my uh i had a sash folder with a whole whack of different papers and stuff in it everything from unfinished notes and lyrics all the way to uh printouts of uh of artwork i've done in the past and what have you and i just brought it with me it's like my workbook and they confiscated that and took pictures of everything yeah so i don't know man i'm just trying to point this out to people because like People have to know who's running their countries, like, and who's running the border guard and their, you know, other crap. Like, it, this is this 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 has to be more well known because these companies aren't going to go away. The way that they treat people has to change. I know they're not going to go away, but the more people that are are that are actively pursuing them to change the way they do things the better chance that we have of not being made examples of, the better chance we have of actually, you know, exerting our human rights to travel and to explore. Anyway, I'm, I'm done for now. Uh, there's potential for a part three here. Um, I want to get off this, this whole subject, and burn it, but I promise you guys some coverage. And uh, as... Uh, as, as I as I dig more, I will uh, I'll, I'll I'll show you some more stuff that I have come across. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, stay safe out there. Peace.